Hi, my name is Anish Patel, and I'm going to be talking about Afro Ben's Orinoco. Um, first, we can move on by talking about the main characters. The main characters were Prince Orinoco. Um, his slave name was Caesar. And then we were going to talk about Imonda. Her slave name was Clement. Uh, we also have King of Caramantian, a bone, by him, and the captain. So move, uh, going back to Prince Orinoco, um, he's a prince of Caramantian, and he's uh, also the grandson of the king. Um, the importance for him is he gets tricked into slavery, but then later leads a revolt. Um, he sleeps with his grandfather's woman, a.k.a. Um, Amonda. He is also the figure of many themes in this play. Um, he can also be viewed as a coward um, by not being able to kill his enemies, which uh, who was by him, but even though he was able to kill his honorably kill his wife and his kid. Um, moving on to Amonda, um, her description is that she's a beautiful woman that loves Orinoco, but was forced to marry his grandfather. Um, the importance of her is that um, after sleeping with Orinoco, she was sent to slavery, but Orinoco thought that she was dead. Um, they later meet as slaves and they reunite. Um, she, again, was honorably killed along with her uh, unborn son to prevent either of them from suffering any longer. Um, for the next few characters, I'm only going to be talking about the captain. Um, I think he is uh, more important than the others because um, he is the captain of the ship that Orinoco went on. And because of the captain, he, um, he captured Orinoco and forced him to go and suffer as a slave from the beginning. Um, now we're going to be talking about the concept of the noble savage. Um, uh, as in our discussions, the concept of the noble savage is a man uh, that is free of sin and does not have the appetite to do wrong to those who have done wrong to him. Um, Orinoco is like a perfect example of a noble savage. Um, for example, in the quote above, the captain has already harmed Orinoco, but Rather than Orinoco sw uh, swearing at him or harming him, he says, bye, um, thanks for allowing me to see your true self, even though it caused my suffering. Um, uh, we can also see that he didn't want to harm him, and going back to the concept that even though the noble, like the noble savage doesn't have appetite to harm someone, even though they harmed him, he perfectly fits in. Um, now we're going to be talking about the most important moment in this um, story. I chose the climax, um, which is where an Orinoco uh, uh, conceives a plan to honorably kill his wife and his unborn child. Um, and then afterwards he's going to kill his enemy, which is Biom. Uh, we can see um, that this never happened because Biom was, was still alive at the end of the novel. Um, but... Um, he was forced to um, think that thought, and uh, we can actually see that Orinoco was waiting and was ready to give up his title as the Noble Savage, um, which um, I guess for a short second he did by killing his um, wife and his child, but he uh, readily adopts the concept back up when he cowards out and can't kill someone who has harmed him and... <clears throat> because of this, um, we can see that, again, he fits into that um, noble savage um, concept. Um, yeah, and then here is my works cited page. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this. Thank you. Bye.